There's Emmanuel Valoria. We're going to be stringing a V core SV100 by Yonex. Start off by cutting out my mains. Oh, well, the cross is going up. I usually have bigger, bigger cutters. That'll save time, but I'm at my mate Nathan's house. People saying just you, do, you cut in a circle or something. I don't know. I like to keep it fairly simple. Do you normally have music playing or anything when you're stringing? Um, if uh, I'm really relaxed, yeah. Um, generally by myself, yeah. But I find that lately I've been doing really easy mistakes in terms of with the clusters, easily misweaving. So now I just want to really work on focusing first because I think um, I haven't had enough time to um, practice as much as I used to in lockdown. Because yep. now work's been crazy and uh, my son's running around more and um, and another one on the way. Another one on the way. Seven, seven <coughs> weeks, two, three days now. Um, going out yesterday. Uh, yeah, seven weeks. We're happy to see Bob for the first time. <coughs> Inspect your frame, make sure your grommets are um, nice, uh, no cracks that will damage the string. The person I got this off um, seems to have taken care of it really well, even though it's pretty pretty old model now. Now mind you, this is my first time using this, this beautiful machine. <coughs> So I'm starting from the throat because it's six holes. Did you say it was the yep? So the outside ones do the mains, and the inside ones do the other four. The inside one. Pre-measured my string for six meters. Amazing crosses. Just got to figure out the clamping system, what tension I want it at. It's a hundred square inch. Um, and I'd go. I'll just go, maybe go fifty. Maybe start off even. Starting from the throat um, and something like I've mounted it wrong. Three 
things through evenly. Pretty much self taught from YouTube. So, whatever I do, I've learned off YouTube. That costs about all. Pressure. It's not so much thinking about that 40 minutes, it's more just getting used to this machine I've never touched before. <laughs> it's a pretty good machine. Yeah. There you go. That's it in flash. Now I'm not quite used to this clamping system. Yeah, so. Lock. You got a sign up hand. I use it as backup. Now, I don't always use the Diablo. So I'll just go straight into it. I do three on each side. Some people do two at a time, four at a time. This is just easier for me. So the reason you'd start with three, three? Yeah is because it's a 16 v 19 yeah. so 3 3 and 2 at the end means 8 on each side see Matt's is not my strong suit <laughs> um, but yeah thing is the string patterns and stuff it gets all pretty confusing um, not confusing it's just a lot to take in especially when you're first starting out can you tell me why you string from under the frame, not above? Uh, because um, I don't want to put any unnecessary um, tension on this on the throat of the frame, even though it's the strongest bit. Um, when you're pulling tension, you don't the the frame's already warping. So I don't want to warp it unnecessarily. If that makes sense, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. Yeah, the other reason you don't is because if you pull it over the top. You end up scratching and damaging the frames. I just know that everyone, from what I've watched, everyone just does it under. And the amateurs, they, they don't care. They don't care what they're doing. No, now, I've done three on this side. I'm just going to pull, pull through the next two just to save a little time and get some string out of the way. Come back for that middle here. Take my string clamp off. Very good nick that frame. Where did you pick them up from? Um, prestige I got from Essendon because this guy works at tennis only and it's a demo frame. And they probably just gave it to him. He's not using it because he's gone back to Yonix. I love Yonix all those years and I've started just experimenting with the head rabbits. Um, but this one, uh, it wasn't Keywall. This guy had it. He had two four and quarter grip sizes, and then this is the only four three eighths he's had. He's got. But I find that the old school Yonex frames, their grip palettes were about the same as what the standard is now. But now the new Yonex um, grip palettes are pretty big. They run pretty big. So they're not pallets anymore. Oh, it's not pallets. No. So the new Yonex grips 
they're half a size bigger than a standard. So if you've got grip two in a normal frame, mm. I can guarantee you've got grip two and a half in the Yonex. Yeah. Since this was even on three sides, I'm gonna go, go up to six on this side. Stringing with Black Magic today. I hear a lot of good reviews about it. And I've been excited to try it out. I don't think it matters what Genesis string you got, mate. I haven't seen a bad report anywhere in the world about any of them. It's all fairly new, honestly, because yeah, before I met Nathan, I had no clue. No clue. Yeah, I started trying out the products. Can I believe it? One, two, three, four, five. And the quarter's six one. Six one. I'm just gonna pull through the seven, but I'm not gonna tension it yet. I'm gonna come back to my pre-weave, that will not weave forward. Starting to get a bit of a groove. I strung with a, um, this fancy Yonex machine the other day, but I didn't like the sensor the, there. Oh yeah, no, that's horrible, that thing. Um, I, it kept messing me up, honestly. I prefer a button or a lever to just so I, I feel like I'm actually doing something with the tension rather than letting the machine take over. Because I like having feel, personal touch. And control of it. Yeah, control of it. So it's... One, two, three, four, five, six on this side. It's six even. So I'm probably just gonna tie off. I'm gonna do the last two and tie off. You gotta not tie you you gotta not put through this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna skip that one. And uh, in the throat. Do I have to push the knot button first? For the tension. Yep. Now it's not going to reach because I measured it like that. So if I have a spare string laying around, I can make a jumper. Oh, that's pretty long. Alright, decent. What starting pack is this? Um, it's a good one. Yeah. Tips and tricks. Awesome. I'd rather waste a bit of string than do yeah, that. There's your short here. Right. So now you're going to tie off. Now I'm going to tie off. I use pineal knots, but Get to use the Wilson Pro Knot. That's my next next assignment. This string feels really nice on my fingertips. Other, other string is just straight through me, through the skin, towards me, away from me, back towards me. I'm gonna pull this through. Same thing, back, forward, keep the tension, let go. Now I'm gonna come back for the other side. That's a lot of mess. So 
So what made you choose the Parnell knot for the bottom ones rather than just the double hitch? Double hitch um, damages your grommets. Um, I prefer a thicker knot and it's just fun to, um, to do the knot really. I quite enjoy it. Um, yeah, pretty good. And it looks like the Wilson Pro knot is just out of similar. Not quite any. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's gonna be sixteen. Keep that on there. Now we get the tie off. I tie up on the second main or where the grommets, the big enough grommet, they show up, and I pull the slack. Tension. Now I get to cut off the excess of the tails. Not too short, not too long. Nice, very nice. Lovely. Now I've got one skipped hole on each side. I like to, when it's one skipped hole, I'll start under this side. So that means on this side, I'm gonna go over. So you do the Yonix, <clears throat> the Yonix way? Mm. to these crosses because I've been really disappointing messing up lately. Starting clamp, if I had a Parnell pad or just anything to protect this frame, I'd just put it on in between that clamp. But this should be all right because I won't keep it on there for too long. So under, and then finish over. pull from the second because um, if I go from the first I'm just going to be pulling it twice more than I need to. So make sure that's straight. So how many crosses do you weave before you pull tension on one your ahead. top one? One ahead. No, on your top knot. On my top on knot? On your first knot. Uh, okay, so this one I'm going to pull through, then I'll weave again, but then I'm just going to come back with the first one. So you pull through three. Um, I don't want to damage the string because that sometimes the clamps are too good and they'll they'll squash it. Okay, so when I do it, I leave this thing on all the way to the end. Yeah, some people prefer that way. I used to do that, but then I only have one starting clamp. If I had more than one, I'd probably leave it on. It it's all personal preference, really. Like. Yeah, to become a Yonex string, you got to leave it on yeah. the whole time. And then I hear this racket run guy, that guy that does um, Federer's or Inca's rackets and stuff. He does what? He does that thing with Honestly, I only started doing it because I only have one starting clamp. Because I like to use the starting clamp to um, tighten my knots. So eventually, I would like to buy another starting clamp. Yeah, at $50 each, it's not cheap. Exactly. Um, I only started stringing just to save money. Obviously, because I love experimenting with strings. 
experimenting with strings and I'm really picky with tension loss. If I start spraying it, I'll start blaming the equipment rather than my technique. It's a bit of, it's mostly technique. <laughs> a good tradesman never blames his tools. Exactly. <laughs> And it is a bit of a shout out because the stringing is being done on the Sabosi stringing machine or the Emperor one that uh, AATC and Racket World stock and sell. Great machine. For the price, I reckon it's one of the best machines on the market. Definitely. But I sure as hell don't have 15k to drop. Oh, God, no. I do not. Plus two kids, oh, one kid and then another one on the way. It's a lot of restringing, mate. 15 grand, I'll give you the tip. Nathan, has Finn got food? Finn? Yeah. Can I, can I feed him now? So I've got to go feed them because they're doing my head in. Yeah, go in. Just bring his, I'll get, I've got him doing a video. He's got to do a video for an assessment. That's all right, that's all right, though. No, you can talk, you can talk, it's all right. Beautiful string to string with that stuff. You can leave it open, love. When you finish that, I'll, um, I'll give you a couple of tips. Obviously, I'm a heavy stringer. No, no one's taught me anything. No, it's always good to learn, though. Yeah, I'm always open to learning, open to criticism, because I won't take it hard, really. Now, I guarantee the couple of little tips I've got for you starting off and everything mm. will make your job probably five to six minutes faster. Mm. Oh, I'm really just trying to take my time, especially with the costs. Like I said, I've been making some mistakes lately. Oh, don't worry. I'm, I had I got all the way to the bottom string last week and had to cut the whole lot out. Oh, no, no, I was, there was no chance I was unraveling string. I just like cut it out, mm -hmm. done. It's too easy to make simple, simple mistakes that will mess up the whole thing. That's why I'm just trying to take my time, honestly. If it's more than 40 minutes, sorry, I'll have to do that with an assessment. Yeah, you got 17 minutes. You should be done dusted long by then. Mm. Oh, they wanted me to change an over, but it's too hard. No, that's not in the 40 minutes. Oh, is it? Okay. No. I thought that was part of it all. No, that's the restring's 40, then they just want to see if you put an overgrip on. Unfortunately, I don't have replacement grips. When you hit with this, you'll notice that it's a very, very, very soft poly, but you'll lose zero tension loss before you break it. And as you've discovered with the other strings, you've got to cut them out because you okay. can't break them. I haven't broken strings in a while, to be honest. Either I don't hit big enough or I don't have enough spin. But because I've been trying to focus on flattening out, because ever since I changed the semi-western grip, my forehands changed a lot for the better. Well, I had Hexonic 2.0 in red in one of my frames. I had it in for eight weeks, it never lost any tension. I ended up cutting it out because I couldn't break it. 
the, the was that hexonic power? No, hexonic 2.0. Okay, but even with hexonic power, I couldn't break it. No. I, couldn't, I just cut it out. And you wouldn't have had any tension loss before you cut it out, I wouldn't have thought. But same, even felt better um, as... As it wears, it does, it plays better. Because with other strings, you know, it feels like you're losing the magic. No, not with Genesis. Genesis, especially like my my mate or junior, um, he picked up a Head Speed Pro, had Genesis True Grid in it, never played with it before, the racket and the string, because uh, I had his racket strung up with Piper G, so we go like that. And when he tried that True Grid, um, it's like love at first sight. Love at first hit, and he didn't want to put it down, but he had to because uh, I don't know the grip was getting dirty, it was starting to slip from his hands. Yeah. But it wasn't a Genesis over grip, actually. No, it was some other grip, might have been. No, I can't even remember. Yeah, I like to full weave. Uh, I've been trying to practice my push weaving. Um, I can't do that push weaving. Look, I've been trying, I've been practicing, like try to learn both. I'd rather do it that way. Black Magic's also really good as a hybrid. Black Magic in the mains and the Genesis Explosion in the crosses. I just gotta be really careful towards the end of this record because I don't wanna mess it up. Start it over. I started, I'm gonna finish this over. That is a smooth clamp. It's one of the best clamping systems I've seen. Mm. When you when you get used to it. And you, you eventually, if you do buy one, what you'll realise when you undo the clamp itself from the top, if you let the clamp drop, it automatically releases the base. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, that's that automatic system. Too fancy for my machine. My humble crank machine turned into electronic. Like I said, mate, for three and a half thousand dollars of what you cat what you pay for that machine on my website through the stringers portal, you won't buy you'll never buy anything as good at that price. I'm a believer. So you said release the clamp. Yep. Well, that saved me some time. <laughs> I'm just used to my machine, honestly. Yeah, no, as soon as you release that top part and the, the clamp drops down, it'll automatically release the base of the clamp. Yeah, I'm just trying to be careful. It's not my machine and everything. I can't give you all the secrets to the machine until you buy one, otherwise you might never buy one. Oh, you know me. I love buying new toys. Uh, you just got to convince the wife. That's a hard sell, man. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Words to live by. Yeah, I would agree with that. Especially in this first trimester. Not much of a secret now. Um, yeah. You know how they recommend. 
recommend it if you wait 12 weeks before you announce anything. You can lose it at any time. Yeah, that's right. Um, like, we had a miscarriage this year. But this is our rainbow baby, as she would say. And I started streaming trying to save money, but now I just want to try and save other people some money and give back to the tennis community rather than focus on the competition side of things in general. Like tennis is supposed to be fun. You don't have to, if, if I ease the tension of your gear, it make expenses as well. No, I'd agree with that. That's my, that's my two cents. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that don't have the same opportunities that we do. That's why I do what I do here with the little pro shop, mate. Mm. Is to be able to give, you know, sell them a bit cheaper than the big stores. To be able to give... Um, you've got that, uh, you've got that personal touch. And the knowledge as well. Yep. That goes with it. Yeah, anyone can go to a superstore, mate, and buy tennis products from someone, from a 17-year-old kid that knows nothing about tennis rackets. Exactly, mate. yeah. Some of them are nepotism hires too. Oh, I knew. None of my business. Now, before I'm going to tie off, I have to make sure everything is properly done. Otherwise, Well, you'll know, when you, especially when you get down to the bottom of the throat, you'll know because your strings won't pull straight. Mm. Either they won't pull them. straight or when, like the bottom cross or the bottom two, they'll feel, they'll feel loose or if you messed up at the top, it'll feel loose. No, not necessarily. Uh, from, my, from what I've done, yeah, from what I've, I've experienced. That'll be a lot to do with the string. Mm. If you've got good tension holding string, it won't happen. Alright, so I guess I'm on my last cross now. So I started under, finished over here. Now on this last one, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna push through under, and then I'm gonna go over this main, that second main. Alright, just to double check that second last cross, because that's where I messed up last time. Under, over, under, over, under, under, over, under. Under, over, under, over. Cool. Now I'm gonna start over. Comes out from under. Never be too careful. Measure twice, cut once, as they would say. That's the old adage. Like I said, I'd rather waste a little bit of string than have my string too short. Yep. Now, because I went put that through under, I'm trying not to do any crossovers. So I'd, ideally, I'd like this one to end up underneath this the string here. Doesn't That's cool. really matter. It's just aesthetic, really. Um, I work like a charm. Good tools, eh? Your knot should be for that should be at 11. 11, what do you mean 11? So it should be on from oh. at 11. Oh, okay, okay. One, Never two. tie your crosses off on a main. Yep, yep, sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. But it's, it's, like the new, it's like the newer versions. I always tie off on the cross. They're all the, sa all the same. All Yonex frames have always been. Yep. It'll, it's either tie off on 10, I think, on the 10 or 11, yeah. And 11 on the V cores. I and never knew about, um, before Yonex, I never knew about tying off on crosses. But 
um, ever since I started doing more hybrids, I'd like, yeah, I like doing gut on gut with the tie off and then poly on poly. Um, just to save your string. Another pile on that. Tension. Now release the bottom. Yeah, you still have about six minutes. I'll just have to use my fingers for what? Straighten out if I Oh yeah, I I don't I don't do that other stuff. Yeah. I do it all manually. Yeah. Personal touch. Look, you've got to train your eye. It's hard. It, it takes a while to figure out, honestly. Um, might be easier if I take, um, dismount, but if I can get yep. some done. If I can get some done now. That actually looks pretty good. Yeah. But I feel like, I feel like that machine really helped out with keeping my crosses straight. Like whenever I pulled, I put my finger on the string just to help guide it back straight. Yep. Sometimes the um, clamps make the mains push in as well, but not, not those not, clamps. Not here. So I start off with the outer. Or no, the inner? inside ones. Inside ones. Yep. So that's for the under your. Uh, yep, and then. Ooh. Done. Yeah. Did you want me to change this over grip? 